This is a Stokes Croft in um, in Bristol. The the uh, the area is named after well, it's a croft, as in a, a piece of uh, farmland, a small piece of farmland that be, uh, belongs to a bloke called Stokes or Stoke. Um, anyway, the um, so this would have all have been uh, market gardens at one point. The uh, in 1643 there was um, there was fighting uh, in the English Revolution here. Uh, the Royalists tried to break into um, uh, the city, which was um, in the possession of um, uh, the, the parliamentary uh, forces under uh, Nathaniel Fiennes, um, which we shall go into later. Um, it, uh, there's a lot of controversy over Nathaniel Fiennes, but anyway, let's, what we're doing today is going for a walk. We're going to follow the trail of the, the defences um, around the city. Now, because of the medieval city didn't need to think about the high ground around it, and there's some big hills around Bristol. Um, uh, because, but um, but when they came to when it came to the um, point where we had artillery, they had to possess the the upper ground. So so that meant building a wall around Bristol on the high ground. So we're going to follow the northern part of that and have a discussion about what happened. Hello, <laughs> uh, uh, So we found um, the site, uh, I knew it was some, up here somewhere, it's a nice little um, um, sort of Georgian and Victorian um, uh, uh, townhouse square uh, in um, an area of uh, Bristol called Kingsdown or, or Cotter, I can't remember exactly where the border lies. But they, we found Priors, there's a, there's a sign here for Priors Hill Fort. Uh, it also uh, talks about Colonel Rainsborough who stormed the fort, but this is two years after what I'm talking about today. Uh, Colonel Rainsborough was a leveller, so as, it, as they've um, pointed out to, to me, um, I can, um, well I've obviously got to take the opportunity to talk about him. Colonel Rainsborough was a leveller and he took, um, took part in, a, in some radical uh, action um, during and after the Civil War um, uh, for universal suffrage, um, uh, land reform, um, uh, redistribution of wealth, all of that sort of good socialist stuff. And um, but sort of 300 years before we actually expect it, 200 years before we actually expect it to happen. Uh, so uh, Colonel Rainsborough was a very interesting um, uh, character. But anyway, now this is um, Prior's Hill Fort. Uh, let me just show you um, around. Anyway, right, let's move on to the next bit. Um, we're heading towards uh, through Cottom, that way uh, to the next uh, location. What I didn't say um, back there is um, on the Royalist side, um, I'm particularly interested in what goes on on the parliamentary, uh, parliamentary side in the sense that um, the parliamentary forces were seeking um, changes in the constitution that would have brought new rights for pretty much everybody. Um, but on the Royalist side there, was, there were interesting characters. Um, um, I'm trying to look for, I'm not saying um, Grandison um, was uh, Viscount Grandison, um, one of the Villiers family. He was related to George Villiers who was by marriage, he was um, uh, not by marriage. Um, he was related by marriage to the St. John family which is uh, two videos back. Um, at uh, Lydia Trigo's, but um, in, um, he was uh, related to George Villiers, who was uh, Duke of Buckingham, which, um, whose behaviour also led to the English Civil War corruption uh, and assassination. And um, so, yeah, Grandison, Viscount Grandison, was killed at um, uh, Stokes Croft. Um, there was a uh, described as a push of pike and and the firing of um, pistols, uh, and uh, he was shot in the leg and later died. He's buried in Christchurch Cathedral in Oxford. I've got um, I've got some footage somewhere of um, his uh, his um, memorial uh, on a completely um, 
different subjects um, to this, but nonetheless, um, so he's an interesting character. There were, there were brave people on both sides. Um, there were people who, who swapped sides. Uh, and I'm not saying um, all the good people on the parliamentarian side because the parliamentarians then went off to slaughter the Irish, uh, which wasn't the, um, the finest hour for, um, you know, in British politics, and uh, to say the least. So, um, uh, that, I mean, there's some, some, which is why you get support in places like Scotland and Ireland for the Stuart family. It's because it's pretty clear the Stuarts wouldn't have slaughtered the Irish in such a, or the Scots in such a, in such a, in, in the way that people like Cromwell and Ireton did. But anyway, on to the next uh, stop. This is an example of why the, the, the um, so in medieval times, you would have shot an arrow here to try and hit the city. The city is, the old city is just down there, right at the bottom of the hill. So you wouldn't have hit anything with an arrow here in medieval times. But as soon as we got the cannon, I could sit here all day blasting away at your city. So this is why the, um, the defenders had to uh, possess this bit of land. So along here there would have been, um, along here there would have been a, uh, a wall with uh, forts along its, uh, you know, a forts within so many feet, so many yards um, along its length. We're heading um, towards the um, the hospitals. Look, there's the uh, incinerator over there and um, the university um, area. We're looking for the Royal Fort, so um, so that was a handy little sign. Uh, the Royal Fort, however, was built after the um, Royalists took possession of the of the uh, city. Uh, but there was a um, fort up here, a separate fort. Oh, it's quite a nice little garden. It's a bit of a sun trap as well. It's, um, it's definitely uh, smartened up around it since the last game. It really um, went it very um, but corporate but, but nice. Um, this is the university grounds. Quite an impressive building, uh, some quite impressive building, uh, 19th century building as you would expect. Some huge um, um, sort of techno technological and industrial stuff like up here. Looks like an observatory of some sort. And that's a 19th century building, pretty impressive. Mixture of French and, uh, and um, medieval, uh, Victorian um, Gothic uh, style. They yeah, actually uh, quite well balanced uh, for its very strange mixture. This is uh, Royal Fort House, and this is where the uh, Royal Fort, obviously, that's uh, much later, I'd say uh, 18th century that. But what happened next? The um, so um, right, you might have heard of a guy called Washington. Um, his great great grandfather um, had a brother whose son was uh, Colonel Henry Washington. Uh, he um, he was part of a regiment that broke through the wall here. Uh, somewhere along here, there was um, they hadn't quite finished building the wall when the royalists attacked. So the um, <clears throat> he saw an opportunity, uh, broke through, demolished part of the wall. Now there was a guy on the other side who was supposed to protect that gap, um, and his courage was called into question before. Um, there was a, there was a few bits of um, um, stupidity, uh, incompetence. Well, there's incompetence in every organisation, but the, um, we sort of sort of believe that the Nathaniel Fines was incompetent, and the person he put in charge of this gap in this wall up here, 
well this weaker part of the wall up here was also incompetent, I've forgotten his name. Um, but anyway, yeah, so instead of what he should have done was uh, when they were clambering over the wall, all disordered, he should have shot every single one of them, but he didn't. Uh, he hung back for a bit, so which allowed the um, allowed the uh, Royalists to get onto the other side and form up. Uh, they weren't quite formed up when somebody did. Um, Nathaniel Fine's own um, horse cavalry um, turned up, um, gave them a hard time, but because they weren't, Hello. it was um, but it was a bit too, it was too late by then. Um, what happened was is uh, Colonel, um, I think is uh, the General's Wentworth. He sent his men from here and they just swarmed through the city, through the suburbs of the city, down to College Green, uh, just causing havoc. But actually that's when they took the most losses. Uh, but anyway, let me show you, um, let me show you some more stuff. That tower up there is, uh, is Cabot Tower, which is on top of Brandon Hill, which is the next fort along. Uh, so there would have been uh, it's, uh, so there's a valley between um, this, the fort here and um, that, that fort up there. Uh, and it's here that um, uh, Colonel Washington uh, broke through. I'm heading to uh, Park Street now. Um, I don't know exactly where, exactly where the fortifications would go, uh, but I'm... Um, I'm crossing straight over to uh, Brandon Hill. I'll, um, anyway, let me show you right. This is Park Street, and what happened was that um, Colonel Washington's men would have rushed down here at top speed. It would have been um, fields around here, not uh, buildings. It would have been the odds. I think I've seen a map with the odd cottage on this uh, road. And then down at the bottom there's the suburbs, um, and uh, there wasn't the council house at the, uh, the bottom, but down at the bottom is College Green, uh, where they rushed down there and they were taking heavy losses, going, um, the um, parliamentarians were taking pot shots. The, um, one of the estimates I've seen is they lost up to 30% casualties, which is enormous um, at this point. Uh, so they've broken through, but the sacrifice was huge. This is uh, Bartley Square. It would have been built uh, probably about 100 years after the English Civil War. Uh, this is uh, Brandon Hill, which is a very commanding spot, as you can see. Uh, there's supposed to be earthworks over here from the uh, Civil War that you can see, but I'm having trouble identifying them. The, um, but yeah, the, the, there would have been a fort here that would be quite substantial, um, probably about 20 foot high, um, with a load of cannon on them. And uh, it's uh, basically when um, when Washington's troops and Wentworth's troops um, broke through, uh, they were shut out from up here. Now, at this point, Nathaniel Fiennes, um, uh, the criticism of him starts. He withdrew a lot of his troops back within the old medieval walls of the city. I'll show you them in a minute. Some of them, there's a little bit left. And uh, where they um, sat there for a couple of hours. Um, some of his troops didn't do that. They stayed behind and uh, took on the... Uh, on the Royalists, um, and they were fighting from street to street. There are suburbs down. There were suburbs down there. The uh, anyway, yeah. The uh, from here. Uh, so even though I mean it was a tactical mistake, uh, it shows Nathaniel Fiennes was a bit of a, a bit of a revolutionary, a bit of a politician, a bit of a administrator, but a crap tactician. Uh, he withdrew his troops when what they should have done, it's a bit of a death trap. So, um, so uh, when Colonel Washington came charging down that hill, they still were being shot at from all sides, from the houses down below in the suburbs, and they were being shot at from up here. 
and they were suffering uh, 30, up to 30% losses, which is huge. It's a surprise they didn't run away straight away. But what actually happened was that the parliamentarians under Nathaniel Fines ran away. There was a lot of disgruntlement from his own troops. You can see just above the treetops, uh, I think that's the Swallow Hotel, which is on College Green. So that's probably about a quarter of a mile is where um, all the troops were. back on uh, Park Street heading down to uh, College Green. I'm going to get a spot of lunch I'll, um, uh, before we go down there. Uh, can I have a tomato, um, uh, tomato soup please? Two rolls and uh, two butter. Would that be okay? So this is uh, College Green here. The uh, Cathedral St Augustine's would have been here at the time. Council House wouldn't. Uh, this would have been a row of cottages pretty much on the same uh, footprint. Uh, but this green here belonged to the uh, church and uh, all sorts of shenanigans went on in this area. But this is where the, the, um, the troops assembled. Um, so we'll move on to the suburbs next. So this is uh, right. Um, this is before our period, but it gives a good, good idea what sort of buildings. This would have been a maze of small streets with buildings just like this, and uh, they would have come down from the top and had. There would have been people with muskets, possibly chains across the road, um, taking out the royalists as they as they came down. Huge losses at this point of the battle. Um, but what's interesting. Um, it was a bit of um, it was a massive disaster for the parliamentarians, and the reason for that was because um, Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel Fines didn't know how to lead troops. He um, didn't have any real experience of fighting, and um, so what happens was he surrendered the city. He'd, he'd one of the lowest estimates for losses on the parliamentarian side was 11, 11 killed, uh, which means. Whereas, you know, um, you know, a couple of thousand uh, were, were killed or taken prisoner on the, uh, on the other side. So it was, um, it should have been a massive victory for the parliamentarians, but it wasn't. Um, because Nathaniel uh, Fiennes um, surrendered. Now he, um, his troops knew this was all wrong and protested strongly. Um, and after, after the battle, um, uh, he was taken um, up to London and um, investigated by the House of, uh, House of Commons, uh, who basically investigated him for cowardice. Um, uh, and it, um, in the end, he stood trial in St Albans for his life um, for uh, cowardice and treason. Uh, he was found guilty. Um, a lot of people gave evidence, his own troops gave, gave evidence against him. Uh, and he was, uh, and people of the city gave evidence against him. So he was, um, just the facts speak for themselves, 11, you know, the lowest estimate was 11, um, 11 people lost on the parliamentarian side. The lowest estimate 
on the Royalist side was 21% losses. And when they started off with like 7,000 people, that's, you know, so you, you do the maths, you know. So it, was a, it should have been a massive win for, but he panicked because they broke through the outer defences. He uh, didn't know what to do. What he should have done was concentrate his fire from, from the hill forts uh, and held the, um, held the um, medieval walls, which he could have done. They were, they were um, fortified. And if that had failed, he could have ret um, retreated into the, uh, the castle, Bristol Castle, which was demolished after the war. So, uh, demolished after the Civil War. So, um, but he didn't, he just panicked. Uh, this street is named after Prince Rupert. And there's another uh, street named after General Fairfax and various other people. So this area shows you uh, the sort of medieval and post-medieval um, uh, style of buildings that would have been at that time. Uh, the cobbled streets, the, uh, the tightness. Uh, so the royalists would have had to uh, fight their way down here while people taking pot shots at them from windows. This is uh, Christmas Steps, uh, previously Christmas Street, and a, uh, a cavalier was killed here, a commander. I uh, can't remember his name. There used to be a game, there used to be a plaque here. Uh, not so much to celebrate as to mark it, and that seems to have uh, disappeared. Um, another uh, loss to, uh, to um, those trying to discover our heritage. And here, around about here would have been the, uh, the bridge over the Froom. Imagine this uh, dual carriageway here was, um, is a river, which is a fine, um, which is a, a really decent uh, form of defence. And over there is, um, beyond that building, that building wouldn't have been here, there was, uh, there, there was the wall. That over there is St John's Church, which is uh, built into the wall. So that's the old medieval city wall there. And all that space between that wall and, and this pavement here was, was quayside and river. Uh, and between here and there was a bridge. Um, on this side there would have been a gate, just like the gate over there. You can see the gate just, just beyond the bus. The, um, it would have been a gate, a fortified stone gate, which is, which is the Froome Gate. Um, some people think that uh, gate over there is the Froome Gate. Now, it's at this, this point, uh, so in that street up there were uh, about 200 soldiers waiting for two hours uh, while Nathaniel Fiennes got his shit together. Uh, he, uh, he failed to get his shit together, uh, so the women of the, of the city filled the gate, which is on this side of the bridge here, just like that gate over there, filled it full of wool sacks, full of rubble and, and uh, rubble and earth. Uh, to block the royalists from, from entering. And it was used uh, against him in his trial. And for the sake of the record, I'll give the names of the, the, the leaders of the women. Joan Batten, Dorothy Hazard, uh, Widow Kelly, um, and they're celebrated in Bristol folklore as the women who, who uh, tried to save the city. Uh, so that's it then. Um, that's uh, my little potted history of the first siege of uh, First siege of Bristol in the English Revolution. Um, the city fell to well, it didn't fall. It was surrendered with um, uh, surrendered far too early by uh, Nathaniel Fiennes. You'll find on the internet how he was. Um, he was actually a courageous man who uh, was forced to give up the city when he wasn't. Uh, he was tried for treason and cowardice. He was found guilty, but. Um, I think the thing he was actually found guilty for, his dad was influential, you know how these things go. Um, uh, but he was, uh, he, he was stripped of his command, he was found guilty of um, giving up the city too early. Uh, about 50, 50 barrels of gunpowder were, um, uh, were lost to, you know, and guns and so on were lost to the, uh, uh, the Royalists. And uh, it was estimated that the Royalists had only 20 barrels of gunpowder left. So they could quite easily have, they'd won, the parliamentarians have won, it was um, Nathaniel Fiennes' um, cowardice that led to um, the loss of the city. I remember Bristol was the second city of the nation, it was its uh, second biggest port, um, massively wealthy, 
It was really important to both sides. The loss of uh, Bristol uh, prolonged the war by you know years, but um, but anyway, yeah. No, he lost his, his. He was no longer allowed to hold a hold a position in the army, but carried on in politics. Um, uh, but uh, it's recent research has pointed out the, the sort of infamy surrounding the guy. But anyway, that's my little history. Uh, perhaps I'll do another one of the second battle of. Um, well, the second battle involves levellers, so that might be quite interesting, one of my favourite subjects. Uh, so I'll see, see you on the next one.